uh, perpendicular fields, uh, zero back EMF, self-motoring effect, okay. bucking fields, scalar wave quadrature, minimal hy hysteresis, electrically resonant, mechanically resonant, Biffler windings, Gavagene induction, tachyon tap, uh, transient tap, inverts, transforms, DC to DC conversion, DC to AC conversion. Either It works either way. So all you got to do is add a rectifier. Brushless solid state, multi-winding versatility, uh, generates super efficient induction and modular construction design. So those things are all uh, designed into the machine, you know. And what it does is it makes a motor that's so efficient that it's just incredibly, you know, it's not free energy, but it's doing strange things. Uh, I mean, I can uh, load it down when it's operating all my machines. I can load it down with a severe load. I can even directly short circuit it. Uh, uh, short circuit the output. Uh, what happens? Generator, yeah. And you know what happens? Go ahead. It draws less power from the source that's powering it. Okay. In other words, I, I it's a motor it. generator. It's in an electric motor with a generator on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motor generator combined. Okay, but what happens is the more I load it down, the less power it draws. What about, okay, what happens when you put the load on the shaft? I put the load not on the shaft. I put a load on the electrical load on the generator output. What was the load? The load is usually light bulbs because it's, that's something you would use. The loads I've been using on it were resistive. They weren't inductive. Yeah, I know. Light bulbs is resistive. Yeah, yeah. They're useful, though, you know, because all the induction machines I've ever seen are designed wrong, except for the ones that a free energy guys built. Sure. And there's only a couple of free energy guys, the Cromray generator, mm -hmm. uh, the Adamski generator, uh, and a few others that that know, uh, Sparky Sweet also knew, uh, uh, what, one of the, one of the things on my list, one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. Of course, the most important things are, are, uh, how to put everything in phase, you know? Mm -hmm, totally. So it doesn't work against each other. What happens when you put a load on your shaft? When I put a load on my shaft, um, it draws more power. Of course, it behaves like a motor. Now, my, my, uh, my motor upstairs, it's uh, one quarter of one watt. Okay. Everybody that's seen that thing that knows anything about motors says that uh, even the bearings would use more power than that. You're talking about the little one on the left? Or the little sort of a uh, square one. Square one, yeah. I saw and, and a little rotor about facing directly at people. Very simple. Yes. But very, very sophisticated in design. Isn't it the one that you put... Um, Turn it on and maybe draws about a two amps or something, and then as soon as you put a stack of magnets on top, armature is accelerates like crazy. Uh, well, yeah, it does accelerate when I put the outside magnets on it, and it does. Uh, uh, it's a self-motoring effect. Mm -hmm. okay. You know what I mean? Yes. But it, it doesn't completely run itself or anything. It's not free energy. You know, I never claim to have free energy. I, I know. I'm not. Yeah, I know. I but know. I but I do claim that I have very efficient motors. Of course, you can see that on the meters. And everybody that I've showed it to on the meters and stuff, one guy was an electrical engineer. Yes. Uh, Dan Danforth, as a matter of fact, the guy that built one of the Stanley Myers machines that worked. Okay. Okay, and he's dead now, but anyways, he, he saw it and he said it was free energy, but I, I don't think it is. I think it's just a very, very efficient motor. Do you remember uh, input versus output? What was your the most efficient machine that you made? And oh, input versus output. Yes. The most most efficient machine that you ever made. What was that input? Well, that one quarter of one watt. Now, dig this. The other one you saw with the big wheel that weighs about 15 pounds. Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw that. The one that I loaded down and it doesn't slow down, but it drives less power. Mm -hmm. They both have different things they do. That, they're not they're not the same exactly. Yes, yes. Okay, so but that one when I first designed it, I designed it as a motor only. Okay. And as a motor, I got it to run on 1.54 watts with a 15 pound rotor and a shaft that was three quarter inches. 
1.54 watts. That's hardly anything. You know, I mean. Just little about one watts? Yeah, one, 1. 1.5 watts. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's unbelievable. And what was the RPM? Do you know approximately? Uh, the RPM was about 750 or so. Okay. I, I've had a clock on it, so. Okay. So, is all I can tell you is that, uh, um, Okay, the load. Did you put any load on it? And what was I can load the shot down, but because it's a, it's a big flywheel, there's no, you know, it, it, it doesn't behave normally. Flywheel has so much inertia that it's pretty hard to stop with your hand. So even when it's motoring, when it's motoring at 750 RPMs, to try to stop, it's a little bit hard on your hand, you know? Yeah, it's, it's got, you know, 36 magnets in it, and it can heavier, weighs 15 pounds. Just the shaft on it is three quarter inches, and the bearings are from a car. Oh my goodness! So I got, you know, I got the bearings from a trash car. Okay. And they're they're uh, roller bearings, the kind that have a a cone on them. They're yes. roller bearings. Yes, I'm familiar with. Which that. actually have more friction. They're for heavy weight. Mm. Roller bearings have more friction. 